Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? This topic comes from someone also named Chris. Hello, John and crew. Well, just when you thought the Ezra saga can't get any more bizarre, apparently Ezra is on the run, MIA, and they cannot be located to be served court-appointed papers from local authorities. The scary part is apparently Takata, the young teenager who Ezra is accused of brainwashing and grooming, is at the uh, is at the center of the court papers. Is with them. Thoughts on how much longer can Warner Brothers stay silent? All right, thanks for sending that in, Chris. Every time, every time, a new Ezra Miller thing happens, I think to myself, it can't get stranger than this. But it has. Okay, just to catch you guys up a little bit, uh, without having to go back and cover everything about Ezra choking women and throwing chairs in people's faces and breaking into couples' bedrooms at night and, you know, restraining orders and all that kind of stuff. So just to catch you up on the current situation. So uh, young girl Takata met Ezra Miller when she was 12, uh, according to her parents. Her parents, we talked about this last week, um, have gone to court to seek an injunction that basically bars Ezra Miller from being able to contact, communicate, or be in the presence of her or her family. The family claims that he's been brainwashing her since she was 12. At 14, Ezra flew her out to London and then got her to drop out of school at, at the age of 18. She is now 18 years of age. Um, and when the parents went to go do a wellness check on her, uh, the parents said that Ezra uh, had taken away her keys, ID, bank cards, anything that let, would be able to let her live independently, that there were bruises on her body and all that kind of stuff. And the mom even says that Ezra assaulted her at some point and did file an official um, report with the police. So long and short of it is, the court has granted the injunction that basically orders that Ezra Miller may not be within 100 yards of the family and cannot be in communication with Takata. Here's the problem. Officers went to serve the court order, and they're gone. They say they can't find them. Now, listen, it is not like there is a national manhunt going on, and they're, you know, pulling a Saddam Hussein, and they're living in a six-foot ditch under somebody's <laughs> backyard. But as of right now, they can't find them. This comes to us from the folks over at the Los Angeles Times, and they wrote the following. Chase Ironize, that's the father, uh, said he and, he and the court have no idea of knowing where Takata and Ezra are to gain help from other jurisdictions, to serve or enforce the order which bars Miller from contacting or harassing Takata and Chase Iron Eyes and Jumping Eagle for 30 days. Miller is also ordered to stay 100 yards away from the family's residence during that time. According to the Domestic Violence Protection Order, the court, quote unquote, will grant the relief requested in the petition for a restraining order if Miller doesn't appear with the hearing, and, he, and Miller did not, it cites the Federal Violence Against Women Act, which gives the order broad jurisdiction nationwide. So that means this court order, which was done where they live, is enforceable across the entire United States. Now, look, again, we don't, it, it would be very easy to over, although how do you make this overly dramatic? It's already very dramatic, but it would be easy to over dramatic. Then again, People are thinking back to like, what was the Mark Wahlberg Boston Strong movie about the Boston Marathon bombing? I can't remember the, the title of Patriot Day. Patriot Day. I Patriot Day was, yeah. was the name of it. Where, you know, oh, the, 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 the kid was actually hiding in somebody's backyard under a tarp in a boat. I, I don't think that's what Ezra Miller or Takata are doing right now. But they clearly don't want to be located and served with this, at which point the court order would be enforced. This is yet another strange thing. Now, again, on this show... We are not here to talk about TMZ shit, okay? I really don't care about all that kind of stuff. Where I get interested is when, does something that's going on have a direct impact on the movies and entertainment that we watch? Because we are a movies and entertainment show. That's what we focus on here. Every time something with Ezra Miller comes by, we say, surely Warner Brothers can't stay quiet now. Surely Warner Brothers has to do something of this now. And it just keeps escalating. And I want to remind everybody, a couple of years ago, when Ezra choked that girl, I had said on this show, if they don't do something about this, this is going to come back to bite them in the ass. If they just equip and encourage and enable Ezra to just act however Ezra wants to act, and they don't show any direct consequences of their actions... This is going to get worse, and it is going to, I said, quote, this is going to come back and bite them in the ass. 
Well, teeth is firmly planted on anus right now. This is biting them in the ass hard right now because before what they could have done is said, listen, we were very concerned by what we saw from Ezra Miller. We have sat down to discuss things with Ezra Miller. Had Ezra put out a, a statement saying, I'm embarrassed by my conduct. I've learned a great lesson through this. I'm going to work on myself, blah, blah. They could have handled this two years ago and then done what studios do. Put three body men on Ezra until the flash comes out to just stick with Ezra. Three six foot five dudes to just stick with Ezra until that movie comes out. And it could have been dealt with and done. Now their options are extremely limited. What do you do? By the way, I'm seeing a lot of people online making false comparisons. For instance, I see a lot of people online saying, well, they fired Johnny Depp pretty quick. Why aren't they firing Ezra Miller? Well, the big difference with the Johnny Depp situation and Ezra Miller is that Ezra's movie is shot. They're done. This movie is sitting on a shelf waiting to be released. With, with Johnny Depp, I think think they got like one week into shooting yeah something so like that. to step in and remove the johnny depp from that whether it was right or wrong to do it i'm just saying that was a different set of circumstances than this is we've spent the 200 million we've spent this money on this movie this movie is supposed to come out it's not as simple as just well let's just fire ezra and replace them you can't just do that now because the movie's done now you got to drop another 200 million but this is a situation that continues to evolve and listen as the person in the email writes, Warner Brothers surely has to say something now. The tricky thing is they should have a long time ago, but right now I don't know that they can now. Because right now, today, this moment, this is an evolving situation where there's a lot of unknown facts. Like we don't even know where Ezra is. For all we know, Ezra and Dakota were kidnapped. I, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying right now, this moment, Monday afternoon is not when Warner Brothers should be saying something, but they should soon. But guys, I, this is one of those situations where everybody thinks they know what the right thing to do is. But I'll tell you what, I don't know what you do if you're Warner Brothers now. You've spent $200 million and counting on this movie. You can't just cancel the movie, but you now have a living pariah. And and, and I feel badly saying, saying that, but, but, you know, in, in an allegorical way, you have a living pariah who's now the face of this movie. Can you release it in theaters? I, guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Let me take a second to tell you why my wife, Ann, and I love HelloFresh. As two working professionals, at the end of the day, it can be tough to get dinner together. And HelloFresh saves us loads of time, money, and most importantly, gives us great tasting and nutritious meals. And no joke, with the easy to follow along instructions, Ann and I actually have a blast cooking dinner together. And they're so foolproof, even I can do it alone when Ann's not there. And HelloFresh now has over 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That is the most choices of any meal kit out there. Customize your favorite dishes with new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. So guys, right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code Campia 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Rob, what do you do? Like they they give you a call, David Zaslav, he's got his axe. I mean, he's yeah, ready to go. He, he's ready to swing that axe, but what do you do at this point? Well, first of all, I've heard so many weird things on this story. Like I watched her Instagram post. She I saw that. She did an Instagram post saying, you know, people are saying that I didn't say the words I said. I assure you, I said them. And she was coming out against her parents. And to me, it's like, okay, so when she was 14, she was flown over to England to be on the set. Did her parents let her go? Like, it sounds to me like there's a lot more to the relationship here than we're, that it's being reported. And I'm not saying that this is a good thing. It's not. In no way, shape, or form. But I had read that that uh, she was at Bard College and Ezra Miller was paying her tuition for her to go to school. Like, I would love to know the the, the evolution of this entire relationship. If if they met her at Stan, if they met at Standing Rock, you know, back when she was twelve, now she's eighteen. 
So you've got six years there of, of obviously an ongoing relationship. And there's all this, the parents are like, all this wackiness is happening. I'm like, well, where have you been for the last six years while this relationship developed between Mr. Miller or they and I, your I, daughter? I, I has I don't want us to make this about the parents. Well, no, but I'm asking like like we're we're now we're now at the end of a road that has been going on for a long time. And we're now being asked to draw a bunch of conclusions based on a situation that we don't know much about that has clearly been evolving for some time. Now that we're at this road, the question becomes what does Warner Brothers do about the Flash? I think they have to finally now say something because the studio, through their inaction or they're not saying anything about this, it's now gotten to the point where, folks, you are are asking people to even, what's it like to work on The Flash, John? Like, if you're an effects guy or an effects person and you're, you're working, how do you feel about going to work every day looking at, say you're doing, you're working on shots of Speedster traveling through a city and it's Ezra Miller and you're looking at these, what's that like for people? Like, how do they feel when they go into work? What is the morale? They've still got a year of, of post-production on this movie. I can't imagine what it's like with all of these things coming out, what it's like for the actual people that are working day-to-day -day on this film, that your own studio hasn't, they haven't said anything. And that's a weird position to put people in, I would think. I don't, I've never heard of a movie like this, but I can't get past the fact that there's people working on this movie every single day now. And they haven't said we're going to halt production. They're they're moving ahead. They're they're going. They're spending money. And what's that like? And I think Warner Brothers has to say something. They have to say something to the public, and they have to say something to the people that are continuing to work on the movie. I think it's only fair. Chris, I mean, I, I sometimes when I see people I know doing something really really dumb, you think to yourself. What good do you think is going to come out of you doing this? Yeah. What idea lost out to this one? And and, and, and I, <laughs> I, like, I think if I could have a hotline to Ezra Miller right now, it'd be avoiding the authorities. What? I, I'm just, I'm just curious. What is the optimal outcome yeah. of avoiding the authorities? Right? Like, how does this help you moving, regardless of what the situation is, how does trying to hide from the authorities being served a court order, which has been issued against you, how do you think that's going to help the situation? I mean, I, I just right. know, what do you, what's standing out well, to you with all and this? And it's just adding to a narrative that already so many people are chiming in on, right? Yes. And it doesn't, it doesn't add anything positive to it. And, and just to echo you too, right? We're, we're not here to add to that narrative because we're not in the room with these people. So I, I don't want to demonize anyone involved in this situation, but Warner Brothers has backed themselves into a corner. We talked about this on Friday of by remaining complacent, they become complicit. And then when you don't make a statement, everyone then creates a narrative for you. What do you do now? You certainly can't have Ezra on your press tour. You don't know where they are. Where's Ezra? <laughs> How are you going to do all those talking heads if you don't know where the flash is, right? <laughs> what do you do with this film? Do you just dump it on streaming? Probably. I mean, you have to know where they are to do work with them. <laughs> and I just, again, I can't get over the fact that this movie's still in production. Yeah. It's deep in post. Well, it's, well, it's in post. It's yeah, post. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. They're I mean, in post production. It's, at it's this not, part. they're not, I mean, but that's vital to a movie like this is actual principal photography. You know, they've, they've got, and they've got more people working on the movie now, probably the army of effects artists. And then mm -hmm. you've got sound design and whoever's scoring the movie and your poor director. What's, yeah. Poor Andy Muschietti. I, I, that, like, that's the guy I feel most bad for right too. now is Andy Muschietti. I mean, he's done nothing but pour his heart, energy, soul, passion in this mm -hmm. film, doing the best that he can to make the it as good as it can be. The actress who gets to be Supergirl and everything, how excited she was about this Oh, yeah. Now, now, no matter what happens now, yeah. her moment is going to be completely it's overshadowed. completely overshadowed. You know, this is her big thing, mm -hmm. and now this is going to be completely overshadowed. And Michael Keaton it. returning as Batman. Yeah. Okay, so I was going to bring this up. You obviously, this is not like a um, situation where Christopher Plummer had to come in and replace the scenes of Kevin Spacey, right? Because Kevin Spacey was a small role in that film. So they just had to bring in Christopher Plummer, shoot a couple of days, re-edit, all that kind of stuff. That is different from this where Ezra Miller is the lead of this film and plays multiple versions of themselves. Exactly. In it as well, right? So, so here you go. This is what you do. You take this two hour and 15 minute movie and you edit it down to a crisp 90. 
a crisp 90 minutes where you basically edit all the flash out. You shoot a few extra things with Michael Keaton and you call it Batman returns again. And then you just re-edit it and make it a Batman movie. Well, we there talked you go. about this a little bit of just making it a flashpoint event and minimizing all of the flash parts. Yeah. I mean, focus it, on the the old man Wayne. Call it Batman Flashpoint. Yeah, <laughs> Batman Flashpoint. Yeah. That yeah, kind of works. Mean, that, you know <laughs> exactly. But you know what, what? I don't understand either is if you've got nothing to hide. Like since this situation's developing, you got to throw it back to Ezra Miller. Like, dude, you. It's up to you to come in. Your reputation. Don't you want to face this? If you're, it just makes him look guilty as all hell. Well, and that is what I don't understand for for everyone involved. Then why why there just aren't statements being made. Aside from these now, you know, um, these charges that are being pressed, right? Ezra Miller should have had a meeting with PR and put forth statements. WB should have had meetings with PR and put out statements because now we're just snowballing, right? It just keeps getting worse. And how do you backtrack now from something that has gone completely downhill and started off as something that still was awful, but now it's just this huge cornucopia of bullshit and by the way the court <laughs> order that got issued was temporary it was a 30-day order right Th that's that's why i say if i get to the hotline desk miller right now it's like okay okay just let them serve you the papers work do whatever it is you gotta do for 30 days it's only for 30 days I tell you what now they're gonna go back to the court and they're gonna say uh this 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 can't be for 30 days anymore now they're trying to avoid the authority i mean so I don't know. Again, we do not have all the information. And when you get new information, you change your perception of things. And maybe tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, we're going to get new information and this will all look a lot more innocent. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I mean, and listen, I, I everybody knows I like Ezra Miller as the Flash. I've always defended mm -hmm. Ezra Miller as a Flash, but this is really damn concerning. It's also just a bizarre situation. Like, were they hanging out by their parents' house? Like if he was, we've not had any reports that he's where, where in, are they in North Dakota, South Dakota? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's like, so if they didn't know where he was and they, 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 they put this restraining order, this 30 day, if he wasn't around them. They went to the, they went to their house. They went to Ezra's house. Right. Not there. They, they apparently looked around in some basic places, could not find where they went. Not their kid's like house. That. So again, yeah, listen. Why they don't they watch TMZ? They're in Hawaii. And yeah, maybe, maybe they'll get turned up tomorrow. More shenanigans in Hawaii. Anyway, guys, question is for you. This is an evolving, completely odd and strange situation that seems to get worse by the day. At some point, Warner Brothers is probably going to have to say something uh, about someone at some point, you'd think. But what happens here? Question is for you guys. What do you think is going to go on here? And what do you think the outcome is going to be? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.